Oppo continues to find themselves on each new smartphone, and in this new evolution, there are some things lost, but plenty more gained. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here we are with my first look at the Oppo Find X2 Pro. You saw it right off the bat there. This is a different kind of material for the backing that we've seen in quite a while. This is literally vegan leather and it gives it quite the grip, quite the different look, especially with that slightly orange color. And ultimately this is a unique phone already from first glance. Oppo is not shying away from some very unique choices in their design. On the bottom there you have this metal play that actually says Oppo, that's where the logo is. And then of course you have this camera hump up here that has three different sensors, all of which seem larger than your usual. Now we're going to get into the cameras in a little bit. Uh, there is a lot to talk about here, especially with how powerful these lenses can be. However, Oppo have once again done that thing where their software in the review unit is not final yet. A firmware update will come a little bit later, so I won't be talking about camera samples and their quality uh, really in depth in this first look after all. But I did take this phone out for a couple of hours and got some photos and videos for you to see later in this piece. But we do have to talk about the fact that the front facing camera is now in a punch hole on the screen. Yeah, there's no more pop-up camera on the Oppo Find line, uh, and that's a bit of a bummer from a design standpoint. It did make the phone feel pretty unique, uh, but this time around, what Oppo's trying to do is take some other risks when it comes to the design and get the fundamentals right underneath that surface. Because everything that wraps around that punch hole is a powerful screen. You're looking at a 6.7 inch AMOLED here that is capable of both Quad HD Plus resolution and 120 Hz refresh rate. That is a powerful display through and through. Not only are you getting high resolution on here, it is still 120 Hz, which is where most people feel like they see some actual changes in the speed and the way that things are rendered on the screen. Everything just glides so beautifully on here. There's also something called the O1 Ultra Vision Engine, which not only enhances the video motion, but also adds HDR video enhancement. But the other thing you'll notice about this screen is that it does have that curve, uh, which is something that we're starting to not see in other flagships. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind as far as the handling is concerned. Going from left to right, there is sometimes an issue with the palm rejection, and I find myself having a little bit of trouble actually reaching something on the other side of the screen without triggering something else down here where my palm rests. Simply put, this might be one of the most powerful displays we've seen on a smartphone thus far. And honestly, I've already been playing a lot of games on here and watching quite a bit of content, and I have really enjoyed it. But as far as all of those games and apps and media are concerned, uh, you won't be wanting for any performance here because there is the Snapdragon 865, along with 12 gigabytes of RAM and a whopping 512 gigabytes of onboard storage. And finally, rounding out the internal specs, we have a 4260 milliamp hour battery that is charged with SuperVOOC 2.0 at 65 watts. You're going to get a lot of battery back in just a small amount of time, which is always great to see from Oppo, and they were one of the pioneers of fast charging. Okay, so clearly there's a lot to like already from the spec sheet of the Oppo Find X2 Pro. The software itself is pretty robust as well. It comes with not only a satisfyingly fast face unlock, but also an in-display fingerprint reader. All right, so let's go in and get into those cameras. The front facing camera is a 32 megapixel selfie cam that does provide a bunch of beauty modes, which is pretty common for Oppo phones. Uh, and it also allows for things like bokeh video. You know, I gotta say though, even though the front facing camera is a 32 megapixel camera, it's a little bit disappointing that you still can't get 4K recording on the front. But hopefully it'll make up for it with pretty good audio. After all, there are three mics on this phone, so Hopefully it's picking up my voice pretty effectively. So now we can get to the rear cameras and we can go down the line here. The main sensor is a 48 megapixel sensor. Dang. But then you get over to the ultra wide camera and it too is 48 megapixels. Double dang. And finally, we have a 13 megapixel telescopic lens, which shows that Oppo is obviously on a quest to provide as many options in high powered sensors for all of your photos and videos. But the main sensor also has the benefit of phase detect autofocus along with dual native ISO. These are all things that will ensure that photos come out looking really great no matter what situation you're in. Not to mention there's always a night mode if you need to turn that on for long exposure captures. This particular combination lends itself to a lot of great features. First of all, the 48 megapixel high res mode now has a couple of different options. You can get a regular 1x photo and then you can move over to an ultra wide which is also at 48 megapixels so you get a lot of detail in even a wide angle shot. And then in video, you can record in 4K, 4K 30, 4K 60, but at the same time, there's something called Super Steady and Super Steady Pro. 
You might be familiar with these kinds of stabilization modes in plenty of phones, but what Oppo did with Super Steady Pro is allow it to use the 48 megapixel ultra wide camera so that it can crop in a little bit and provide the same angle of view as the One X when you're not using Super Steady. And it's nice to see that Oppo is still backing their own innovation of a telescopic lens for hybrid zoom. The zoom levels can be used in both photo and video, allowing you to get from a wide angle to 1x, 2, 5, all the way to 10, and that is the hybrid zoom level that allows you to have still high quality photos. You can then digitally zoom all the way up to 60 times, but it's probably not something you're gonna to use too often. Even then, 10 times despite having good quality is not something I feel like I would use too often when two and five really are a good range already if you need to get closer to any subjects. But you can even get closer to a subject by using the wide angle camera as a macro lens and get just millimeters away from an object for a very clear shot. Again, there might be some enhancements coming in future software updates, but it's clear that Oppo is trying to make sure that at the very least, the rear cameras are the most versatile cameras available while still maintaining really high quality. That's the reason why these sensors, when you look at them, you notice just how large they are. I imagine that the photo taking experience will be a highlight of the Find X2 Pro. So I will be looking forward to those software updates and taking this phone out for much longer photo taking sessions. I imagine video will still be good as well, but I'm not too sure how much of a vlogging experience there will be when that front facing camera doesn't provide too many more options other than 1080p capture. But overall, my excitement is still high for the latest version of the Find series. Despite the fact that at first glance, I was a little bit disappointed to see one of the Find's most iconic features put by the wayside. At least Oppo is finding some ways of ensuring that the Find X2 Pro is still pretty cool, both in look and feel. All right, so I've been using this phone all day, uh, downloading a bunch of applications, getting a lot of photos and videos, uh, and ultimately now I am at 4% battery on this thing, so I will end this video with a bit of a time lapse. Let's see how much battery I get back with the Super VOOC 2.0 charging at around 10 minutes worth of charging time. And as you're taking a look at this little time lapse, just seeing how much time is going by and how much battery I get back, I will go ahead and ask you the question, how excited are you for the Oppo Find X2 Pro? Are you happy with all of the choices that Oppo made with their new Find series flagship? And are you disappointed that a couple of things that might've made the Find X so popular are no longer here? So let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, I will just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.